So in this example problem on slide 83, still in our chapter 18 PowerPoint, we're going to shift our focus a little bit away from titrations and acid-base calculations and talk about equilibrium in the context of soluble and insoluble solids. So if you remember from chapter 5 in um, Gen Chem 1, something is soluble if it dissolves in water and something is insoluble if it doesn't. Um, and we learned a bunch of different solubility rules in order to classify specifically ionic compounds as either soluble or insoluble. So it was a little bit of a fib in Gen Chem 1. Nothing is completely soluble or insoluble. It actually exists in an equilibrium. And so in this chapter, we're going to learn that basically something that is insoluble in water does tend to dissolve ever so slightly in water and that undergoes an equilibrium. And we can write equilibrium expression um, for something dissolving in water um, and figure out the solubility product constant or sometimes called KSP. Um, and we can also write equilibrium expressions just like we've been doing for acids and bases for the soluble products of something when it dissolves in water. So this problem, it asks us to calculate the molar solubility of lead chloride in pure water. So we're going to be writing an equation and utilizing our concept of a rice chart again. And basically, we're going to be solving for molar solubility. In this case, we can think of it as our x. So my first step for solving this um, is to write out basically what reaction is occurring. So it's talking about when lead chloride dissolves in pure water. So the equation is simply PbCl2 and that dissolves, that's a solid here. I'll rewrite that so that it's in the correct position. undergoes an equilibrium in water, which it dissolves to produce lead 2 plus ions, which are aqueous, plus 2 Cl minus ions. We produce 2 Cl minus ions because there are two chlorides in my original equation. So this is my equation that I'm going to be dealing with for my rice chart. And I can also write, and we'll write it off down below here, I can also write an equilibrium expression for this, um, where K in this case, it's not Ka or Kb, it's Ksp. Sp stands for solubility product. And it's just like normal equilibrium expression, except for now, we only have two aqueous components. The reactant is a solid, so we're not going to include it in the equilibrium expression. Remember, we don't include solids or liquids. So KSP is going to be equal to lead 2 plus concentration times chlorine Cl minus, and that's going to be squared because of that coefficient 2 up above. So I have my KSP, and the KSP value, it's not provided for us in the problem, but in um, problems you would do on your homework or a test, it would be either given to you in a table or just stated in the problem. So I have it written up top here. KSP of this particular equation is 1.17 times 10 to the negative 5. So ultimately, you're probably thinking, what the heck am I looking for? What am I solving this for? We're looking for something called molar solubility. And basically, it's like when we did an acid-base problem and we were solving for x. So I've already written out my reaction. So that's the R in my rice chart. And then I have my initial change and equilibrium. And I'm going to draw a line. Now, since lead chloride is a solid. We are not going to include it in our rice chart. 
and it doesn't give us any sort of concentrations or anything. So we're going to assume we're starting off with solid lead chloride and we don't have any initial concentrations of lead or chloride. So for I, both of those are going to be, you can say, 0, 0.00. Now for change, we are going towards our product side. So we are going to be adding whatever we make, but we don't know the change in concentration yet. So we could represent this with an X, um, but traditionally, for some reason, chemists have decided that um, instead of X for solubility equations, they're gonna use S. So S and X, they're interchangeable. They both mean the same thing. So for lead, it's gonna be plus S. And for the chlorine, it's going to be plus, not just S, but 2S. And that's because we have that 2 in front of our chloride in our balanced equation. So then at equilibrium, you're going to represent that as S and 2S. So now's the part of the problem where we plug into our equilibrium expression, and basically we're trying to figure out what the heck, what the heck S is. Um, S is representing our molar solubility. So I already have my KSP value, and I have my KSP equation. And so I can write that 1.17 times 10 to the negative 5 is equal to S times 2S, and that's going to be squared, because remember in our expression, CL minus is also squared. So we can simplify that a little bit and say 1.17 times 10 to the negative 5 is equal to 4s cubed. If I distribute out this exponent 2 and then multiply that by the s, it ends up giving me 4s cubed. So now, if I want to get s by itself, I can divide both sides by 4, and additionally, to get rid of the cubed, I can take the cubed root. So not the square root, but the cubed root. So if I take the cubed root of 1.17 times 10 to the negative 5 divided by 4, I'm going to get that my s is equal to 1.43 times 10 to the negative 2. And this is technically, since it's molar solubility, it's in terms of molarity. So that's it. That's the final answer that you're looking for. It's basically just another iteration of the rice chart and solving for x, but in this case we call it s for solubility.